Hey guys, Nick here with another episode of Office Hours at the Sir Links a Lot Studios. And today I wanted to talk to you all about um, building a PBN out after you've already procured the actual domain. Um, PBN building was one of the first things that I got into when I started SEO, and uh, I just really loved the um, fact that you were kind of acting like an archaeologist going through um, old data and finding a way to repurpose it in a way that would be beneficial to um, a money site um, or something similar, um, some kind of target, right? So uh, what I wanted to give, especially beginners today, was just a sort of template on how to go about building your first PBN, so one domain, um, and what to look for, what to uh, do, and kind of give you a blueprint on how to start building a PBN if that's something that might interest you. So um, diving right into it, I've got this outline here that uh, I've developed for you guys. Um, and so, you know, up front, depending on how well versed you are at using WordPress, and WordPress is what we're going to focus on here. I know there's other ways to build PBNs, but we're not going to talk about that right now. This is a beginner intro. Um, so if you're a little bit more advanced, maybe looking for archive rebuilds or something like that, um, you know, maybe not the best video, but still always a refresher or maybe there's something that, uh, you know, you find interesting that maybe you don't implement on your current builds. Um, so uh, when you first start out, uh, you might be taking a little bit of extra time when it comes to your builds. Um, you know, but overall, once you get in the swing of things and you understand where everything's at and the basic moving parts of a PBN, uh, you'll be able to come in here, execute this task list um, in, let's say, under an hour. Um, and I think actually under 30 minutes um, when you're really in the swing of things. So um, here's where we go. All right, so step one, I've outlined as after you've purchased, you know, you're going to host the site and then set up WordPress because, again, that's what we're focusing on here. Um, because WordPress is very easy to use, a beginner can use it, and it's easy to execute quick tasks and, um, you know, kind of amass a lot of differentiation across a lot of different sites um, very easily. So um, I'm not going to talk about purchasing the site here. Uh, that'd be a different lesson. But after you've already purchased the site that you're ready to repurpose, you know how to host it. And if you don't, just type it into Google. There's plenty of videos that are going to teach you how to do that and install WordPress on there. So let's get started on things you might need. Um, one thing before you get started, and it's not a must, let's say you're just building one of these randomly, not a big deal. Um, but if you're building a lot of them or you've got intentions of automating this process through a virtual assistant at some point in time, then um, probably a good idea to get something like Trello, uh, Quip, Airtable, which are just um, management systems, essentially. So one example here, we've got Trello, right? So it's very simple. Uh, start, maybe, and you can add the list. Progress, complete, something like that. And if it's one domain, you've got the tasks that go down here. And if it's multiple do domains that you're building out, you know, PBN1, and you can add, you know, whatever other information that needs to be done there, the niche, whatever, um, PBN2, PBN3, so on and so forth. Um, but this is going to give you a management template that's very easy to use, um, doesn't take a whole lot of work, and just gets saved, especially if, uh, you know, you're not doing everything in one day, or if you're working on big projects, again, automated through virtual assistants. Um, so after you've got that set up and you're ready to move forward, um, you get your site hosted. And the one thing that I will talk about is in your registrar, you're going to want to make sure that either your registrant info is set to private or um, if you don't want to use privacy, which I would recommend if you've got a big PBN, not just putting privacy on your entire PBN as that could be a footprint as well but diversifying using um, different personas. So, you know, uh, different ways to do that would be ask your neighbor, um, you know, friends, et cetera, et cetera, I guess. Um, but let's say, you know, you've got uh, no friends. Well, you know, a quick Google search, something like uh, fake name generator maybe, I think, uh, might yield you something that would be a useful tool. 
Um, you know, I think it's against ICANN, but, um, you know, people I've heard uh, use this. So you'd set it to random, whatever the TLD is, is typically how you'd go about using um, how you'd classify the name and then the country that they um, are in. Um, but one thing to note that I've heard about was that these uh, addresses are fairly faulty. So it's always good to uh, just make sure that this is an actual address. And so this one happens to be, but if it's not, um, you know, I've heard that people would come in here, find a building with, you know, no information and then go ahead and pull the information from right here. But again, uh, that's against ICANN policy. Uh, you know, use it at your own risk, I guess. Um, so once you've got things set to private or somebody else's name, uh, you never want to have the same name across any PBNs, especially if like they're going to the same money sites. The idea is to create a footprint-free scenario it's not going to be traceable by Google or any other search engines crawlers, right? Um, so step one is make sure that your registrant info is going to be diversified um, in essence. Now, step two, research, rebuild, and go ahead and add things to this um, WordPress hosted site. Um, so first things first, you know, I remove sample pages and posts. Very simple to do. Um, right now, I'm just going to use nickaltimore.com, which literally has nothing on it as an example. There's no backlinks. It's not going to be used as a PBN, um, so purely for example purposes. But um, you'll get the idea of how to navigate through WordPress to execute these tasks that I'm going to li uh, list in this task sheet. So um, to remove posts and pages, you just go to either the post section or pages section, you're going to click on, you know, this hello world stuff, and you're going to go ahead and trash them. Okay. Um, we're doing that for pages and posts, uh, so that there's nothing there. Then, um, and I'm not going to go over the specifics of this really, but we do have a tutorial on how to use AREFs to analyze a site. That would be very beneficial if you're not familiar with doing so before you move um, forward with this particular practice. Um, now, if you are familiar, of course, you know you've already bought the domain, um, what niche it is, and you're going to do that by combing through the backlinks, combing through the anchors, um, and maybe even pulling up this site, archive.org, and looking up a historical version of the site itself um, so that you can gauge what niche this particular site's going to be in. Then in AREFs, you're going to look at the top pages, right? Typically, you look at this by best by links because you've let's say got an expired domain and you're trying to repurpose the juice that used to go to a specific page on this site. You don't want that to just 404 and disappear. You're trying to um, keep as much of that flowing to this new PBN as possible. So you're going to do that by um, looking up which articles had the most links going to them, rebuilding those pages um, within your own site, and then do this as a post. That way, um, the posts, because we're going to set it up to show on home page, um, just go through the natural progression of being posted first on the home page and then rolling off as uh, time and posts continue to go through the blog or you know the PBN. Um, so you can do this by going to a place like iWriter, which I'm sure the vast majority of you guys are familiar with. You can use the cheap content. Just make sure that it's going to pass Copyscape. Um, you know, and that even though if it's a little bit rough, it's going to, um, you know, not be plagiarized content, uh, as that will definitely affect the ability for your PBN to pass um, juice to whatever asset you're trying to juice up. Now, uh, plugins are something I talk about later on in this, but uh, since it's pertinent here, I'm going to talk about them real briefly. 404 plugins for people that 
maybe purchased a domain that has like 700 inner pages with tons of links going to every inner page. Um, well, you know, let's say you don't have the resources to build every single one of those pages. Um, you know, what, what, what are you gonna do? Uh, 404 plugins can be used. I use them still regularly, but you want to use them sparingly. You know, if you've got a network of 10 sites, don't go putting them on 50 plus percent of the network. Um, you know, 404 to the homepage type uh, redirects. Um, you're gonna wanna diversify. And um, ultimately I've found that still the best medicine or best recourse of action is to find PBNs that are going to have majority of the links going to the home page or just a few pages, uh, inner pages that uh, you can rebuild the exact same permalink structure to get similar content and have them rebuilt that way. Um, but yes, 404 plugins can be used for. They're not this absolute no-no that everybody says, you know, you should completely stay away from. Building a PBN is about staying natural. So, you know, it's natural for certain sites to use a plugin like that, um, that are actual sites. Go ahead and use it sparingly if you're going to use it at all. Now, upload those articles to the respective pages. Make sure that you're going to use the exact same permalink structure. So let's say that um, the website was nickaltimore.com. I'd looked up the backlinks and uh, nickaltimore.com backslash super mega handsome had 10 million links going to it. Rebuild that page exactly as it is. Um, you know, there are different ways to reuse that juice. However, this is a basic guide. Rebuild that page exactly as it stands, add content pertinent to exactly what that page was about, and um, that, that page is gonna pass juice to you. Um, and affect the overall power of the PBN itself. Um, then add extra pages, right? So these would be things like privacy policy and contact pages. For privacy policy, I've dropped a couple of links here, but if you type in privacy policies or privacy policies free into Google, you're gonna get a plethora of different options of auto-generated privacy policies. Now, you don't wanna do this on all your PBNs. You don't wanna use the same privacy policy on all your PBNs. Um, and you might even wanna use something like um, a spinner um, to spin the content. I don't personally like to do that, um, but it is an option that people use. Um, so leaving it there, uh, again, you know, kind of gauge how hard you're spinning this content and how legible or illegible it might be. Things like that will affect the power of your PBN. Don't overthink it. The point is to just push power. Um, and so, you know, don't get caught up on those kinds of things. If you've got 10 PBNs or you're starting off with like building five this way, fine, put a privacy policy on two or three of them. Just make sure you generate them from different places and that they're, you know, substantially different every time. Um, then the contact pages, this is simple. Um, you use a plugin, type in contact into the plugins area. And we'll go ahead and show you that right now. And you're gonna note that for all the plugins that I tell you to get, and you can also clean up the plugins, um, you just add new and then search for a contact page, right? So you're gonna have a bunch of different options um, find a free one and then you can just use it as a contact page. Almost every website out there has a contact page. If you oversaturate this in a PBN, it's not an issue. However, if you use the exact same one over and over and over again, at some point it could become a footprint for you. So be mindful of the fact that you want to diversify, especially as you grow out PBNs. Um, you know, five to 10, very easy to diversify when you're talking about 500 to 1,000 or more, um, you know, things start to get a little bit trickier. Then um, you can go ahead and add things like, you know, the news blog page, uh, write for us, work with us, for us, advertise, or anything else you might see on a real site. Um, these are gonna make good additions to menus that make the site look natural. They add content, they add relevance about the site, and overall just build up the authority of the PBN. So 
um, you know, this is where you can either get creative with it or just kind of set up a template that, uh, you know, allows a VA to pick and choose from four or five of these different options. All right, so step three of building your PBN, uh, design and details. Now, I know some people that don't bother with design at all on a PBN. Um, they just have bare bones everything. They barely add images, stuff like that. Um, I kind of stay away from that now, um, you know, because it, it, I, manual reviews do happen. And, um, you know, the more realistic your site's going to look, which doesn't really take that much more effort, um, the better chances you're going to have of not getting de indexed should you, um, you know, get a manual review on your PBN. So, um, first off, choose a theme that's going to fit the niche of your site. Um, that's pretty easy to do. However, not all themes are created equal. Some are a little bit buggier than others, some are trickier. Um, so, you know, it's also good to get a set of maybe like 10 to 20 templates you like as you advance through PBN building. Um, but for now, again, keeping it simple, so we'll just go to themes under appearance. Um, I have a restaurant tour one uh, that, you know, I'm not a, I'm not even good at uh, cooking. So right, we'll just go with 2016, um, something generic. So I'm going to activate it and there we're good to go. So then you're going to want to choose the tagline, the name of the site, everything that a normal site would have. Um, for a lot of these, you'll be able to find how to customize this site under the customize section here. And site identity has that. So Nicholas Altimore for nickaltimore.com. If you ain't trapping, you know, you're dying. All right, so you get that idea. Next thing we want to do is go over to permalinks. Um, so you're going to find that under settings, permalinks. And you're going to see that you've got quite a few different options. The one you want to choose when you're first getting into PBN building is just this post a name, right? So it shows the entire permalink structure, or I guess it's going to give a percentage of it, but it'll resonate in the SERPs that way. Um, for the beginning stages, this is the way you want to keep it. Um, and that's going to just make your life a whole lot easier. And it's going to help with relevance within the permalink structure than transcending um, to whatever you're trying to send um, power to, whatever money site you're trying to send power to. After that, you're going to want to uh, create a logo or a favicon. Now, logomaker.com is my favorite one because it's super simple. There's nobody that can't make it uh, work for them. Logomaker.com. And it's simple, you know, type in whatever you want, pizza, search, and they're going to give you different ideas here. Great text, Nick Altimore. Uh, all right. See, and then you just save it. You get the idea. You can use this as a favicon and as a uh, site logo. Or you make two different ones. Point is, it's super easy to use, it's free, and it's a um, good option. Uh, then you can use canva.com to create a quality header. I'm not going to sign up for it right now, but Canva is going to give you a lot of really nice options as far as professional looking um, designs for you know, headers of all styles, email templates, etc. And it's also free. Um, great option, uh, especially when it comes to PBN building. Um, so you're going to want to disable your emails and turn off commenting as well. And the way you do that is just come in here. You've got discussion. Allow people to post. Don't need pingbacks. Don't need any notifications, um, etc. Um, so you go through this. 
make sure that uh, you're just removing anything that allows somebody to come in and spam your PBN with a bunch of junk comments. All right. Now, after you've done that, go ahead and adjust your widgets as well. You're going to find this under Appearance, Widgets. And here's where you can adjust what shows up on the sidebar. Um, leaving these the same all the time can create a footprint. So you're going to want to adjust these things so that they're unique to each PBN, right? It's very simple to do. Take whatever, add it, um, modify it, etc. And you can adjust that everywhere here. Next thing you're going to want to do is, you know, and this is if you want to, you can add banners to make things look a bit more real. You can go to moat.com um, and get all kinds of free banners. All right. And so, you know, once you're done with that, that's overall the design and details. Again, you know, just like a real site, you can always modify it a bit more. Point of a PBN, though, is to build it up quick so you can generate power for another site. So typically, people keep things to a minimal um, when it comes to design and those kinds of things. Um, so then a next step is uh, step four, diversify. And this is a very, very important one. Um, the reason is because one of the biggest footprints that uh, happen when building PBNs, especially for newer people, is that they use the same plugins or too many similar plugins and boom. Um, Google's algorithm doesn't need a manual review to note that all these PBNs pointed to one money site all have the same plugins or a vast majority of plugins. Um, it's a red flag and it's going to get you popped. So use plugins to diversify as well as you know get things situated properly within the site. So, you know, these are ideas in this list, um, but, you know, it's never ending when it comes to finding new plugins to use and, you know, how well you can diversify a PBN. So, big one is SEO plugins. You know, we're all familiar with uh, Yoast, Rank Math, things like that. Um, but if you type in, SEO in the plugins section, when you're adding new, you'll see that there is a multitude of options to pick, right? Um, and one of the main things you're going to be doing with this is adjusting things like permalink structure, etc. cetera. Um, then a sitemap. Now, be sure that the sitemap, and WordPress will give you a little um, warning if this does happen, but be sure that the sitemap plugin does not um, interact negatively with the SEO plugin that often has a sitemap. So Yoast, for example, has its own sitemap. Um, you're just going to want to make sure that you don't have two or that you know they're not causing issues uh, with one another. Uh, then you're going to want something like a caching plugin. So if you type in cache, so C A C H E, um, a bunch are going to pop up as well. And you can use any of these to diversify that as well. And you're going to want to use a caching plugin on all your PBNs. There's plenty to choose from, so diversifying shouldn't be an issue there. Um, a spam plugin is always useful, especially because PBNs don't get monitored all that well, um, you know, unless you've got perfect management. Um, especially for a beginner, you might like ignore certain things that go on. And before you know it, um, you know, the site's been hacked and somebody else has been using it um, and abusing its power to their own benefit versus yourself. So spam's always a good one. Others that you might use, things like related posts which are on your posts. It's going to show other posts that are relatable to um, the one that you just put up. Um, redirects, again, be very careful about using redirect plugins. Um, as even if you use, you know, 100 different plugins that are redirecting everything to the home page across 100 different sites, that's still a big footprint. Um, you know, just Use it sparingly and use it on PBNs that have a lot of inner page juice that you most certainly want to save and send back to the home page. But again, sparingly. Um, social sharing things, um, counters, uh, 
there's just nonstop plugins that can be used that you've probably already used on money sites um, or that are just available if you just keep searching um, through the add plugin section. Um, others, this is a big one too, um, random plugins. So when I go in, I like to always add a couple of extra plugins as well that are just related to that particular PBN. So for mine, let's say I was making nickalthamore.com a website about cars. Type in car in the plugin section, and you're going to see that certain things like this come up. You don't actually have to use it, um, but you're diversifying what plugins are active on this site, and that is something that Google can crawl and see. So by adding a couple of random ones, depending on the niche, um, you're going to help diversify that plugin portfolio for your entire PBN. And I highly recommend doing that. It's very simple to do. All right, and so then when you're done with that, essentially um, you're on to step five, which is get ready to use your PBN. Um, now again, you can adjust things to make it look more real, to do any number of things. You can add all the content in the world. Um, but the main thing is that don't overthink the use of this PBN and don't send a brand new PBN or, you know, if you're not very familiar with the PBN use and you start doing things like this, um, you know, move slowly with it. Um, pay attention to your variables and make sure that you're doing things in a scientific style manner so that you understand what you're doing. And with that, you're going to be able to scale this more and use it to influence um, other networks more efficiently and effectively. Um, to do that, make sure that you're just thinking all the time what is natural for a website to do, um, and to mix things up like outbound links from your um, posts. So, you know, not just uh, the same URL every single time from 15, 20 different PBNs and you're not using a diversification of links, etc. That's not natural. Um, interlinks, sprinkle those in the same way any other website would as well into your posts. Um, images, videos, the word count should change, etc. Like just be knowledgeable in the fact that, you know, naturally within a site, a post might go up with no links. A post might go up with a couple links, some authority outbound links, etc. So just think about what might look natural. And if you get worried about that, all you have to do is type things into Google, get on there, and see what looks natural on a different site, right? Um, try and emulate what looks natural as best you can, and that's going to help your PBN have longevity and continue to pass power to whatever assets you need it to pass power to in the SERPs. Um, but overall, that's a very basic outline of how you can use uh, this template to build a PBM. Um, and available for download down here, I've got a more concise um, put together PBN building template uh, here from Sir Links a lot that you can pass over to VAs that you can use yourself. Um, etc. Um, so hope this helps. Um, and per usual, if you guys aren't already members, join Sir uh, join Sir Links a lot and us at um, the SEO Roundtable on Facebook. Um, if you've got additional questions, that's the best place to ask them um, because typically, if you've got the same question, uh, somebody else has got it out there too.